Welcome, everybody, to the Genesis Project Podcast. Business principles for beginners from the School of Hard Knocks. I say that's the Seth Leaves Clues. In this podcast, we're going to discover the clues that it leaves behind, and we're going to start at the very beginning. We'll get into the weeds of how the guests of the show came up with their business ideas, the why behind their business ideas, how they dealt with setbacks and failures, what keeps them pushing forward, and the emotions behind it all. Everyone wants to start a business, but many are held back by something that keeps them from starting. We'll learn what it takes to get to the next level of business and beyond, and we're learning together through different principles of people who graduated from the School of Hard Knocks. So, grab you a pen, some paper, and a highlight to take notes, because class is in session. Hey, welcome everybody to the Genesis Project Podcast. My name is Bernard Gleaton, and I am the Chancellor as well as the host of the Genesis Project Podcast. I am so elated to bring this next gentleman or rather the next guest professor into this class because me and this brother had a, well, we almost had an hour long conversation before I even hit the record button. <laughs> so with that being said, I, I'm almost positive this guy is going to bring a, a bunch of gems, a, a bunch of uh, great notes, a bunch of great lessons for us to learn from. So this lesson is going to be on digital marketing. So with that being said, I want to bring into the classroom guest professor, Dr. or guest professor David Summerflex. So guest professor David Summerflex, say what's up to the class. What's up, class? Thank you, Bernard, for having me on your podcast. Thank you for everyone out there watching or listening. I appreciate your time. Man, I'm like I said, I, I'm, I'm glad that you came onto the show because I, I think this is something that I cannot teach. People will be able to completely understand or even have the, the I don't think I'll be able to give the know-how for people to actually utilize some of the stuff that you are about to talk about. So with that being said, I, I want you to go ahead and just give a short bio to the class on who you are and what you do and all that good stuff. Sure. Well, basically, I am a digital marketing expert. Um, on my website, I say I'm a digital, an enterprise digital marketing specialist. And um, basically, I have over 20 years, I stopped counting after 20, of about 20 years experience working for different marketing agencies throughout the United States. And during that time, I also was a certified small business mentor for an organization called SCORE, which is a division of the United States Small Business Administration. So while I was working for all these different marketing and ad agencies, <clears throat> I would also volunteer for this organization, SCORE. And I'd actually go to uh, downtown Denver at that time, I think it was the, the US Treasury office, I think. And we would go through the metal detectors and everything and you'd go past, you know, the armed guards and everything. And we would go up and consult with small business owners and so on. And then later I would do it over the phone. Um, I would do it by Skype, um, have meetings, seminars. And then on weekends, I would do my own workshops and boot camps. And I did that for quite a long period of time until just recently. Mm, that is amazing. That's amazing. So needless to say, you are a person who has been in his zone of genius for so long. And which is another reason why I was just excited when you said you would come into the School of Hard Knocks and teach this lesson. I mean, your experience speaks for itself. That's a pretty that's a pretty lengthy resume you got there. It's it's only about half of it that I can remember what or, or, or really should be going into. I mean, I had I've had other positions other than the 20, 25 years experience working for marketing agencies. I mean, in between working at different agencies, I also was a freelancer. So I, I am very, very familiar with freelancing. And I went literally through uh, hell on earth as a freelancer because in between working for these marketing and ad agencies, well, what do you do in between them? 
How do you pay your rent or your mortgage? How do you put food on the table in a consistent, regularly recurring way? So I worked with all kinds of clients while I was trying to learn how to take the processes that we did for these agencies and apply it to myself as an individual, right? And say, now I want to do agency level work, but I'm not in the agency right now. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be me and my wife. And if I need help beyond that, where am I going to go and find freelancers who can help me and work in distributed teams while I'm hustling and doing all this other stuff in between those positions? Because mm -hmm. I'm a lot older than 20 years. I mean, you know, so I had other positions in between all of that. So right. I, I'm far from a genius. I believe in being very humble and close to the earth. And that's why I have these pictures and that autograph um, on the wall behind me, because I believe in being humble and focused. And if you if I forget, I look at that photo, this, you know, autograph photo of the Dalai Lama. I look at that picture. I look at that quote. I try to remember you know, look, you came from the earth and that's where you're going to return. Mm, I think that is the perfect segue into asking you the first question, the question that I tend to ask all of my guest professors, which is, what is your Genesis moment? And for those of you who yeah. are brand new to the School of Hard Knocks and to the Genesis Project podcast, let me explain to you what the Genesis moment is. The Genesis moment is when you come to a fork in the road of your life and you can go right or you can go left. And it don't have to be good, don't have to be bad, but you can see what your life could be like beyond those first steps. So uh, a good example of the Genesis moment would be me getting married. Another good uh, moment would be me starting this podcast. Another Genesis moment is me trying out for the CFL four years removed from high school. So with that being said, guest professor, <laughs> David Summerfleck, what is your Genesis moment? I, in all honesty, I probably had several, like, as you just um, expressed. Um, in fact, I know I had several. Um, I can tell you that growing up, one Genesis moment was I had a friend uh, growing up who was a very, very dear uh, person, had a very kind heart, a uh, very, very generous spirit, really one of the nicest people, one of the most authentic people I've ever met. But he had a, a rough background um, and, and knew some rough characters. And I didn't always look the same way. I used to be a lot heavier. And, um, you know, we used to go out and just party a lot. And I just came to the realization, you know, one day that this really wasn't generating the results, the outcomes that I wanted to see. So as much as I was really good friends with this person and a few other uh, guys who I know during that same period as well, um, that I really didn't want to do this anymore. I didn't want to participate in this anymore. I didn't want to be like that anymore. I wanted to spend more time doing the things that brought me authentic, lasting joy rather than temporary um, uh, pleasure such as, you know, going out. So I just came to that realization probably over the course of several years that I wanted to spend more time working in what I wanted to do and less time going out. And for a young guy in your 20s, that's um, a big decision. Some some people learn that a little bit earlier. Some people learn it a lot later. You know, that was one. And I think another Genesis moment was probably uh, in college while I was working toward a degree in English. Um, I was, I remember I had several internships in college writing for newspapers and editing. And I realized that there really were not that many well-paying positions for writers in uh, that part of Virginia where I was at that time, where I was going to college. So I, I had a genesis moment as far as realizing that, um, you know, look, if you're going to be competitive and, and find a way to make a livable wage in this area at this time, what you need to do is take your background in digital marketing and web design, which at that point in the mid-90s was just beginning. 
So I realized that if I could take my background in writing and editing and parlay that into content marketing and web design and digital marketing, I would kind of have a marketing edge that a lot of others would not have. That is amazing. That is so amazing. I, the fact that you, well, I, I, I I'll say this, the, the first Genesis moment, I could totally, I'm, I'm on the same page as you were. Um, just, just wanting to go after something that, that you wanted to do. And pretty much as, as my grandmother would say, just get away from that foolishness. <laughs> right, right. And it, and it probably took me a period of maybe, you know, three or four years to realize that. Yeah. You know, I had, I had uh, two friends back uh, during that period of time. They were really, really nice guys. Um, really, you know, very kind, gentle guys. Uh, one guy, I mean, both really super macho, super masculine guys. And we would go and hang out all the time. I was probably 50 pounds heavier. I had a long goatee and we would go out and we would hit the clubs. And I, I've, I've always been more of a laid back, reflective, contemplative person. So my two friends that I would go out with were guys who could clean house. They were very, very nice. But if something happened, I had one friend who was really, really good in Taekwondo. Then I had another friend who moved very slowly, but was around 285 pounds of just muscle, just enormous, yeah. like a, a, a brute, about two or three inches taller than me. I'm about 6'2". So he was about two or three inches taller than me and a lot heavier. And, you know, it wasn't unusual for him in his own uh, time to, you know, throw someone out of a window or whatever, if, if he was so inclined. So he could do it. He could do it. He looked like he knew how to take care of himself. And he did. And he was a very, very kind, gentle hearted guy he used to take my mother for walks down the street. And I used to joke and say, she's safer with him than she could be with a with a cop because a bullet ain't going to stop him. Mm -hmm. He'll keep right on going, you're gonna to have to pump several rounds to stop him. Um, you know, but just a really nice, sweet guy. And after several years, I just realized this isn't what I want. Right. You know, right. I'm tired of going out. And when I made that decision, the funny thing is that Providence bent to meet me. Mm. Mm. How about that? How about I, that? I met my wife shortly thereafter at a bookstore. As opposed to the club where I met several ladies, but it didn't work out. Mm -hmm. And um, so when I stopped doing that and literally said, look, I'm perfectly fine being myself. I remember I had stacks of books that I wanted to read. Many, many, many things I wanted to read. Many, many projects I wanted to work on. And as soon as I got into that. I, I met my wife at uh, Barnes and Noble like 20 years ago, mm. more than 20 years ago. You know, there, there's a saying that says, uh, uh, if you really want to achieve success, you find that one woman who will help you get that success. Right. As opposed to those who would take it away because going to the yeah. clubs, going to different clubs, I would meet young ladies, but they were not a good fit for me. There were all kinds of personalities, but they weren't constructive to building, you know, um, stability. Mm. So you, you get out what you put in. Yeah, yeah. I, I think when it, when it comes to stability, that, that, that kind of leads into a good question because I know that you're, you're into digital marketing, as you mentioned before. I wanted to ask you, what is digital market for those of, of, of the classmates who are uh, first time hearing this? Why don't you go ahead and explain to them what is digital marketing? Absolutely. When I talk about digital marketing, most people think online marketing or Internet marketing. Right. And all I do is I change it and say, look, let's be more specific. And to the point, let's call a spade a spade. Digital marketing is simply promoting your business. It's marketing your business. 
So digital marketing is promoting your business, but using digital tools and digital mediums. It's using the company website. It's using SEO. It's using content marketing. It's uh, using user uh, interactions. It's using design. It's using the psychology of marketing. It's using all my own cumulative experience to help businesses grow in what is a digital world right now, especially now with COVID. And whether you believe COVID-19 is real or not, because I know some people still don't believe it's real, but whether you believe it's real or not, as of 2020 right now, and it's, uh, what is it now, November 19th, okay? Most people, if you want to order your groceries, you would take out your phone or you'd get on your laptop or your PC and you'd order your groceries. If you want to buy something, you would do that online. If you want to make an appointment with a doctor, you can now do that, talk to the doctor by uh, video as well. There's very little you really can't do online. So businesses need to get with the program, so to speak, and become more digitalized. And that's what I help them do by integrating all these different tool sets into one cohesive whole. If you're a little bit older or if you've ever worked for the government, you may remember when uh, the Internet first started rolling in the, in the mid to late 90s, they would refer to a website as a portal which is a big mind shift for a lot of people because everything that you would do would go through that company website. So if you wanted your HR paperwork, if you wanted to check your, your bills or make a payment toward a bill, if you wanted to look at something or track something or interact with others, you would go to the company website which was called a portal and you would log in. So what I help business owners do is consolidate overhead while expanding into new markets by combining different digital concepts and different tool sets. So every business takes needs money. And yet most businesses aren't online statistically and most don't use e-commerce to take payments online and they should and they could and it would help them reduce overhead while they're expanding into new markets. So I kind of do that. I think that was a perfect way of explaining it. Uh, just a way of getting people, um, let's let's say their, their ideal clients just in a digital way, uh, which also tends to be a, a less expensive way. You know, it's, it's less expensive doing this than putting in a radio ad or, of course, a TV ad. You know, it is. And if I can add to that, uh, if that's OK with you. No, go ahead. OK. One of the biggest, most popular questions that I hear on a daily basis, and I either get this emailed or um, Skype calls or what have you, or, or I see this online. One of the most common questions is how much? How much? Yeah. Now. And I hear this very commonly from people say, well, I have my Wix or my Weebly or my Squarespace or my blogger site, but it's not making me number one in Google. I'm not getting the phone calls, the emails that I want, and my business is not moving. I'm not getting the traction that I wanted. And what I say is, look, would you put the future of your business in an automated do-it-yourself program that doesn't know you, doesn't care about you, and sees 10 million or more people every day and it, you're just another number to it and they say oh no i wouldn't do that but you have done it and then you complain that you're not getting the results you wanted it would be like you know dating a robot or something why would you do that when you know you're not going to get the results that you want right yeah. but people yeah. people do it all the time so um what I always do to explain budgeting in a broad sense is to contextualize it. And I use what you just said. So when people ask me about budgeting, how do I budget? I say, well, first of all, you're not buying, buying kumquats at a grocery store. You're not buying a single item. It's not a one and done. You're participating in what is an ongoing process meant to promote your business 
over a prolonged period of time, because it's not going to stop next week, it goes on, you're promoting a business. So it's a service that is a process that continually needs fine tuning and updating and tweaking to make sure that you're getting out what you want. And as far as budgeting, budgeting is concerned, what I always say is, look, when we used to put ads in newspapers, the newspaper uh, advertising department wouldn't talk to you unless your budget was several grand. Yeah. It's just, it's just, yeah. it's not worth it for them because they've got staff. They're going to put your ad in their newspaper. They know that it has a certain circulation locally. So if you want to put your ad in their newspaper, whatever it is, even if it's a local community newspaper, they're not going to talk to you for less than a few grand per month. And they never will ever guarantee results. Mm -hmm. It's it's a lot of hit or miss when, when you go that route. They can't. They can't guarantee yeah. results. Now, convert and now take that a step further. It's even more money if you want to put your ad on a um, a billboard over a highway. Yeah. That's got to be several grand per week. Yeah. And who's going to call you? Well, you don't know. It could be a homeless guy with nothing to do. It could be someone on the bus who just had an idea or has a question, or they may not be a good customer or client for you. You don't know that. So they can't guarantee who's going to call you, if anyone, whether they're going to be a good fit for you or not. So you still got to do all this screening and onboarding, regardless of all this money that you're investing. So yeah. a newspaper ad, uh, a billboard ad, and then if you want to put an ad on a radio station, that's going to be a lot more. And you're not going to put an ad on TV for, it's going to be at least several tens of thousands of dollars. I know Hulu just opened up to taking ads for people uh, to the general um, business community. Now, how much is it going to be to put an ad on Hulu? I don't know, but it ain't free and it ain't cheap. And even they're not, and even they're not going to guarantee what the results are going to be because they can't. They don't know yeah. what you will or won't do. I've had clients who were number one at Google, but wouldn't answer the phone. I can't help you. See what I mean? Now, how did I know that they answered the phone? Because I set it up for them as a forwarding phone number. And I'd get an email every time that they'd get a call. You'd see the transcription. I had one client, I actually called them on his regular phone and said, dude, you're getting like 10 phone calls a day. Are you responding? Because if one of those turns out to be a, a legit offer for you, that's 30 grand. You just made back what you gave me 10 times if you respond to three of these people per month. Yeah, yeah, totally. So it's, it's all about getting traction and seeing the results that you want. Mm. I, I think that that leads to, to the next question. Uh, from looking, from doing some of my studying on you and, and, and research on you, I, I found a, a bunch of questions that I thought was just perfect for for this lesson. So uh, I, I want to know, does digital marketing work all the time? Now, where did you get that question? Maybe from, uh, my, from my own know. website. Yes, from your website. <laughs> I, I thought it sounded familiar. You know, yes and no here's the thing it works if you have a business okay okay now that sounds like a simplification of it but it's not because here's the thing i i've gotten phone calls from people who wanted to know how much is a website how much is seo how much is e-commerce and again they're they're buying the chicken nugget and not the chicken to use a metaphor they're looking at things as items and not as part as partaking of a process which is it's not going to work for them that way with that mentality it's a poverty mindset that won't address business growth right so will digital marketing work all the time yes if you have a, a business that's profit focused and that's an important distinction to make although it may seem like a no-brainer a lot of people have businesses that are not profit driven. They're hobbies 
or it could be a nonprofit organization where they're still of the mindset that a nonprofit or NPO doesn't generate profits, but they do. The difference is that they simply reinvest the profit back into their own infrastructure. So for example, Kaiser Permanente is a nonprofit and you can rest assured they are very, very profitable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is there a city uh -huh. in the U S where there is no Kaiser Permanente? Not really. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And they found it on the basis of making money. I remember there's a famous phone call that they have on tape somewhere where Richard Nixon um, was talking to Mr. Kaiser and they were talking about, we've got to get our grip into this healthcare thing because there's so much money to be made. And I don't remember the conversation verbatim, but it was something like, yeah, we have to set something up so, so we can both get our share of this. And that was how Kaiser Permanente began. Mm. And they're one of the largest NPOs in charge of healthcare in America today. Hmm. Now, that is, that is really, really something. Uh, you know, the, the fact that you, that you asked me, or the fact that you started off answering this question by saying, it depends on if you are a business. That, that, I, I want to say, yeah, you know, duh, right? But that, that really intrigued me because once you said that, it made me think, okay, well, I, I guess you, you, you can't have just, uh, you can't just be out here, let's just say, saying, uh, you know, selling bananas, but you're not really a business. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Do you have, right. You have to have an L, you have to have the, uh, a legal structure to, pr to protect you in case yeah. someone decides that they don't like what you do or they don't like how you look or whatever and they want to try to take you to court. So you need the protection of a legal entity. But also you have to run it like a business where it's like a, a well-oiled machine. And I can tell you many, many stories where it was um, heartbreaking to me where I would be contacted by nonprofit organizations where I would say, I love the, the mission that you say you espouse. I love the mission that you say you have. But I can't help you if you're completely disorganized and chaotic and you don't know basic things like what your legal structure is or you don't have a 501c3 status set up yet and you can't take donations. Or what, mm -hmm. what do you do if some homeless veteran asks you for help? I can't help you if you don't already have that foundation, right? If you're not focused on a daily basis of looking at your P&Ls your profit loss statements and comparing those two and looking at your debt and your, your ROI and, you know, what's working for my company, what's not. If you're not looking at it in those terms, it's a hobby, right? Yeah, not, not, not with that, with that being said, you know, and, and I'm not going to lie, a, a lot, a lot of the questions that you had on, on your website was questions that I had in my mind and you just so happy to have, you know, just have the perfect questions up there. That's so why the, I put the, them there. I, I figure as much. <laughs> I, I mean, I try. I'm not Einstein, but I get by. But the idea, again, with content marketing is to try to anticipate the questions that a potential client may ask of you. So now those are the potential questions for a small business owner. Right. right. If If I put the potential questions for an enterprise business owner, which uh, is defined as someone who has 50 employees or more, then the questions would be bad. It would be not better, but different. Mm -hmm. And they would require more detailed answers, like specific metrics. Mm -hmm. So that's my site at the point where it is now it probably needs to be updated honestly so that i have questions that appeal to the small business owner and the enterprise business owner now one of the questions that you had on there it, it asked uh who is digital marketing for and i, I know you you you, you kind of touched on this is it, obviously as you mentioned it's, it's definitely for a business uh, but why don't you go ahead and, and dig into that a little bit more? 
Well, <laughs> it's not it's not for the hobbyist. It's not for the entrepreneur. And that person may be a wonderful person and I can send blessings to them all day long. But until that moment comes, there's a famous quote by Gerder that I have in my workbook that I give to new clients. And I, I can't find, I don't know if I can open another browser window and read the quote to you, but it's a famous quote where he basically says that until provid until you're clear about stepping into the arena with what you want and why you want it, what you will stand for, what you won't stand for, what's acceptable and what's not acceptable. Until you come to that point, which for this podcast would be the moment of Genesis, right? Mm -hmm. Until you make that point or you come to that point, you're really not a business. And that's the hard knocks. Mm. Because if you've had a business, okay. if you've had a business, you've gotten one or two uh, right crosses or uppercuts and you've fallen. And, you know, I, I've had two businesses of my own that I started during all of these things that I've done. I had a nonprofit organization offering sliding scale mediation services, and it was absolutely horrendous. It was a nightmare. Because it's that old expression, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. You don't know what that yeah. means in, until you've been down that rocky road. But so it's mediation services, but it didn't go anywhere because nobody knew what mediation was in the courts where I lived. Some of the courts were receptive, others were not. So mm -hmm. it, it never went anywhere. It just wasn't worth it. The amount of money it cost to keep it running was greater than the, than the amount of money that I was making. So after two years, you, you know, kiss it good night. Now, the other business I had was a marketing agency that or consulting agency, I really should say, with my wife and then a small team of freelancers in between working for different marketing agencies. And they didn't care whether I had it or not, because if I got the job at the larger agency, you either A, didn't tell them, mm -hmm. then they, they can't complain about what they don't know, and B, it's not, it has nothing to do with them. It can't hurt them in any way, shape, or form anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's not conflicting. They're, they're not the same client uh, pool. But to go back to your question, you're asking, who is it for, right? Yep. It's for any business owner who really wants to move the needle. Mm. And, and, and really, that's not enough because you have to be receptive to change. Whoever I'm going to work with, there's going to be some mind. Uh, I don't want to use the expletive, but I think you know what I'm thinking of. There's yeah. there's some mind turmoil that's going to take place where you have to be able to look at things in a different light. Because for a lot of people, when I talk about digital marketing as a process, it's ongoing. That alone in and of itself is very eye-opening for a lot of people because they just have this conception that it's one and done. I have a website. It's over. Mm -hmm. No, it's not over because even if you're number one in Google now, you won't be two weeks from now. Mm -hmm. Even if you're getting phone calls now, you ain't going to be getting them a month from now and so on. Or there's going to be problems or what if the site is hacked? Or what if something breaks? Or what if you want to change your branding or change something and you don't know how? Or if you just want to improve operations? I remember one of the last networking events I went to before the pandemic hit. And I just went largely because I was bored. And it was an excuse to put on my blue suit and go out and step out. And I got my blue slip-ons right here. I don't know if you can see them or not. Uh, but, you know, it was an excuse to get dressed up and go out and network and everything. And I went to this networking event and I remember talking to a pastor. And uh, so he said, well, what do you do? And I said, well, I'm a digital marketer. And he said, well, pff, I already have a website. Bye. I said, uh, uh, well, do you want to tell me what it is? So he told me what it was. I looked at the site. It was a one page website had no way to really get in touch with him or anyone at the church. It didn't have an interactive map. It didn't have any sermon. So if I wanted to listen to a sermon to see what it would be like if I wanted to go there, you know, or a video or something, it had none of that. 
If you mm. wanted to donate, you couldn't. There was no way to do that securely. And the pictures weren't, you know, didn't look very good. They were kind of stretched out and everything. They didn't look right. But for him, he was happy with that. Mm -hmm. So in a way, it was kind of disappointing for me because I felt sad. It's like, boy, I would love to do something for this little church, like what Joel, mm -hmm. o what Joel Osteen is doing for Lakewood Church. Mm -hmm. You know, imagine doing everything for a small church that an enormous church does online. It's certainly right. it's doable if they work with you. Right. So is is digital marketing for everyone? It is if you it is if you want to grow, if you want oh, to work, okay. if you want to work with me. It's digital marketing is for you if you're ready to adopt a new mindset of expansion and growth and exponentially because that's what really excites me. And I say that on my website, I want to work with business owners who are committed business owners or premium service providers. If you're not committed, I don't want to work with you. You, you know, you might not show up. Right. And, and you, you, you have a strong point there. I, when you got to talking about process, it's, it, it, it reminds me of, because I'm a sports guy, uh, particularly football. Yeah. It reminds me of when a quarterback calls to play in a huddle. Yep. Come out of the huddle and he looks at the defense and he realizes, oh man, this play is not going to work. <laughs> and then he has to call an audible, right? And within the audible, he knows who he want to hit or you know exactly what he want to do. If he had his number one receiver to the right, because of the way the defense is playing, he has to call the audible. That number one receiver is no longer on his right. That yes. number one receiver may be on his left now. I, I think the fact that you brought that up, it, it needs to be repeated for the class to understand that this is going to be a constant, ongoing thing. You are going to have to be able to move and, all, and call audibles at, at any moment, <laughs> you know, and, and you pretty much just taking what, is given to you to try to make lemonade. Would you would you say about that's about right there? Well, yeah. I mean, I played I played football in high school. I wasn't very good, and I tried it when I got to college and just got the the, the you know what kicked out of me. I've had my nose. <laughs> I actually had my nose broken like three times because uh, I would oh. just I would get into that stance. It's actually I walk a little crooked actually. Be, no joke, I walk a little cockeyed. And one of the reasons for that is I probably had my shoulder dislocated a couple of times. Uh, mm. I wasn't very good at football, the truth is, but I was heavier. And I remember the coach would say, you see that guy in front of you? I said, yes, coach. He said, well, get down into that position. I forget what it's called now where you're you know, getting ready to go. And he would say, and I want you to aim. I said, what do I aim for a coach? He said, do you see his kneecap? You go put your shoulder and go right into that kneecap and put some torque into it. And if they spin, you're doing a really good job. Uh, and and I and after a while, I started to really want to see them spin. And it was a good way to deal with your frustrations and everything. And I was like 240 or something back then or whatever, you know, which in college is not big. Yeah. No, yeah. maybe 340. And... uh yeah. But anyway, you're absolutely right. I learned a long time ago that as much as I might love organized sports, and I do, I, I took Aikido in college for about two years, and I love it. But I can't, I really do, and I could talk about it all day long. But I realized I'm just not that good at it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I had to learn play to your strengths. And when it comes to a business, you've got to play to your strengths. It's a very, very crowded field out there with a lot of very aggressive players who've been at it much longer than you have. So part of my process for onboarding a new client where I bring them into how I work and we talk about how I work, why I make the decisions I do and how everything is divided and so on. One of the things we, we, we talk about is the necessity of working from a very deliberate 
very structured, organized plan in order to get back specific outcomes. And that if we don't do that, we don't win the game. Mm -hmm. We don't get the mm -hmm. game. And there's a million different analogies to that, you know, a million different comparisons to that. If we look at current events, you get out what you put in, regardless of your political affiliation. If you're doing too much of one thing, then you you can't have these other results in, the, in this other area that you may want, you know. So when it comes to digital marketing, we, digital marketing is one narrow aspect of marketing in general. You've got offline marketing, which is what I call boots on the ground marketing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like for political campaigns, they go knocking on doors. They send you flyers. They do webinars. They do uh, uh, local events like the Obama campaign did. They were huge at boots on the ground. Um, uh, and uh, that's a whole other point where I was trained in political campaign messaging by the White House Project. Um, but I don't want to digress too much. But when it comes to marketing, you've got to go in different directions at the same time. So it's really, 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 really important that you work from a very deliberate, organized plan. It looks like you're going in different directions, but you're really not. They're focused, but you've got to develop that plan first. Just like with football, you've got different players doing different things, but they come together. Mm -hmm. and, I, if, I love that. and if they screw up or let's say realistically from the business perspective, they're not getting the results that they wanted. They don't say screw this and go home. They go into a huddle and they readjust their plan. And that's where you tweak and the process is ongoing. The process continues. It's not over. Yeah. I, I think uh, with, with that being said, you know, we're, we're dealing with a current situation with COVID. And I'm sure that the plans before COVID was to do X, Y, and Z. And now post COVID or even during COVID, X, Y, and Z is not gonna work. So with that being said, how how can you do digital marketing within this COVID season? Within the COVID season, you would do it the same way you did before, only more, mm. only more, more. So if you are a weightlifter, you don't list, you don't lift less weight. You lift more. You mm. know, if you look at Dwayne the Rock Johnson on Twitter, uh, he seems like a really nice guy. I see him on Twitter sometimes every once in a while. He's gotten bigger. I mean, the guy has actually expanded physically, not not mm. not business wise. You know, if you're a business owner, you pivot. Uh, just as you would in football. I guess it's a better metaphor. You expand and you pivot. So give me any kind of business you can think of and we can jack it up on steroids right away. That's what you have to do. You have to pivot. And I have several blog posts on my, my own site where I talk about how businesses can pivot. In fact, there's a blog post I wrote on my site that um, about how an Amazon Prime TV show reignited my passion for marketing and how the small business owner today can learn from this TV show in ways that they mm. never could have imagined the silly, you know, B or C grade level reality TV show. That's only like three or four episodes long, but it can teach you so much about marketing, whether it's digital marketing or marketing in general terms. And um, it's basically you pivot, and you expand, you see what's going on, you recognize what's happening and you change with it. You know, when COVID was beginning, my wife and I were in a local Costco. And I'll never forget, we were in the Costco and I was looking at my phone, okay? I'm looking at my phone, do, 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 as we all do. And she's getting groceries. I looked at the news. And I said, can I use expletives on your oh, yeah. podcast? <laughs> I looked at the news and I said, holy shit, honey. And she's like, what are you talking about? I said, I'm looking at this video right now on some news channel and there are people falling over in China. 
Now, they're not falling over because they were shot or something like that, or they tripped and fell on a banana peel. They're literally falling over. You might have seen that video footage when COVID began spreading through Wuhan. There was a famous video footage of a woman just all of a sudden just fell right over on her face. Yeah. And I, I saw that and I looked at her and I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. Take it. Take a time out from shopping at Costco. We need to look at this for a minute. I don't think this is your typical um, YouTube. Um, what's the the um, spam clickbait? I don't yeah. think this is the yeah. typical clickbait or spam. I think this is real. And these people are falling over, and this is spreading like wildfire through Wuhan. Holy, you know, wait a minute. And I remember telling her we need to start getting twenty five pound bags of beans and rice like like a dirty fiend right now because something tells me this is going to be here in another month or two and they're not going to do a damn thing about it whether you're republican or democrat i don't think there's any disputing that what could have been done was not done right certainly not to the fullest extent i'm very transparent about how i feel um i want to respect people from both party affiliations in the U.S. Uh, but I feel how I feel. And I knew that was going to happen. So we pivoted. And we also contra uh, we also expanded at that time. So we began storing up and I'm glad we did. So as I saw food shortages take place, we were fine. I've had to go on a diet. I'm probably in the best shape I've ever been in because I'm eating, you know, bean smoothies and, you know, bean pasta and, you know, vegetable smoothies and pizza once a week. And, you know, it just on and on and on. I'm exercising more than I ever did. Just I wait until midnight and then I go out for walks because that's the only way to avoid people. And they yeah, had nobody here will wear a mask. So I learned, don't, don't try to explain anything to them. Just go out after midnight. They'll all be gone. Right. They go walk a couple of miles, put 10 pound weights on your ankles and your wrists and go out and do this while you, you know, jogging down there. But you pivot and you expand at the same time. That's how you deal with COVID. So if you take any business that you can think of, there is no business on the world in the world that should not be accepting payments online for their services, for their products, for their goods, for whatever it is they do. If you're an accountant, you can be doing Zoom or Skype or uh, Whereby is another new video uh, service that I, I like. There's Jitsi, there's Blue Jean. there's a million of these. Any fool can figure out how to use um, you know, video conferencing. There's no reason not to do it. So why you would go and meet with someone face to face, you don't need to do it now. Yeah. And if you can't figure it out, you know, ask your kids or grandkids or what have you, just find you a young person. <laughs> or or they can get in touch with me and I'll send them an email. They can email me through my site and I'll write them back and say, here's how you do it. Okay. Very simple. You can uh, even better. Send me a tweet on Twitter and I'll tweet you back and I'll tell you how to do it in one sentence. Believe me, it's that easy, technically. Wow. And I always offer to help people with honest, sincere questions. Usually I don't get any takers. It's easier to complain about the problem than it is to actually take action toward resolving it because now you got to deal with it. Just think, you know, if you complain my business isn't growing, what happens if it does? What happens if you get 20 phone calls from people per day and they want to work with you? Well, now you got to figure out a process. You got to screen out who you don't want to work with versus who you do. You got to onboard them and teach them, you know, how you work, what your services are, what you will or won't do, and, you know, your timeline and how things work. So any business owner, whatever it could be, should be using more digital services and more digital marketing. Anywhere and everywhere, whatever it is that you do, you could give me any question you can think of, and I could tell you how that business could use digital marketing during COVID-19 to expand um, and how to pivot and expand. Mm -hmm. Anything. And expand. Anything. 
process process yeah and the and the process is just basically the means by which you put this into action this isn't rocket science one of the things that i always require of new clients that i who i work with is we need to be clear on who your larger more profitable three or four competitors are mm -hmm. who are eating your lunch every day and when people and i've had people say well i don't have competitors no you have competitors you think you don't but you do it's the fool yeah. who it's the fool who thinks they don't have competitors mike yeah. Ty, mike tyson was at the top of his game and he was scary to watch but the minute he let it slide he had a competitor who came out of nowhere and literally knocked him on his ass literally mm -hmm. and then what happened to his competitor disappeared mm -hmm. disappeared and that's all it really takes really one shot and that was it that competitor knocked him on his ass and ruined his game and messed with his head for quite some time and i still i still love iron mike i'm still a fight fan i still would never ever ever want to face him in a million years even with an uzi but he lost that one time that was all it took and that was his hubris if you will yeah was yeah. thinking that his game was so strong that no one could top it Oh, this guy got a hunger that you don't have anymore. Yeah. You know, he was willing to trade what he was in order to become what he wanted to become. And that's a huge concept for a lot of uh, small business owners that if you're willing to, what are you willing to trade in order to become what you say you want to become? And are you ready for that? Mm hmm. That's why sometimes I just say I'm only working with enterprise business owners because they've got 50 or more employees. They're already at that point. Mm -hmm. But there's another half of me that likes people who are lean and hungry and are committed. And, and they yeah. say, I'm willing to trade what I am in order to become what I want. And if that means investing several grand so I can make back double or triple that in six months and, and you can talk me through this process, I'm receptive to that. But those who are still stuck in that poverty mindset, my heart goes out to you. I'm very empathic to that because I feel for you. I really do. It's a hard place to, to be, but you can break free. And that's what's required in order to move forward and go through the heart, the school of hard knocks, which beats you up to get to the graduation ceremony. So now you got your, your diploma and you made it through the other side, like Buster Douglas did. Mm -hmm. You know, speaking on, on, on processes, uh, this next question, I don't think I've ever brought this up on, on, um, on the show. And I definitely want you to to dig into it. Sure. But I want to know what is customer acquisition cost? A customer acquisition cost. That's basically how much you're paying to get a new customer. Okay. Okay. And and most most small business owners they don't know, but they need to know if you're spending money on a daily business. So in other words, the more overhead you have, the more you need to know your customer acquisition cost as you really need to know because in a lot of cases business owners are losing their their shirt in areas that they don't even understand mm -hmm. so for example you could go in and you could build a nice beautiful new website for a business you could give them seo which is search engine optimization and have them ranking at the top of google but if they're bleeding money left and right and they're spending money on supplies that they aren't using or they have uh, too many employees or standing around goofing off all day long and you don't have the people coming into your store, so to speak, then, yeah, you don't know your customer acquisition costs and it can drive you under very, very quickly. Now, before the pandemic came, I had a goatee that was down to here. And one of my favorite things was actually going to barber shops and getting my beard trimmed and so it would look really nice and everything and manicured and i liked going because i would get to talk to guys and you know and, and just get out right mm -hmm. 
And barbershops are fun. The old school barbershops are a lot of fun where different people come in and you could just sit there for hours and hours and just talk to different people coming in and hang out and get out of the house. Now, the barbershop that I went to, like 10 guys. If you only have two people in the shop, that you're spending money that you ain't making. Mm. If you go into a restaurant and they've got 10 wait staff and nobody in, in the dining area, you don't know your customer acquisition costs. You don't know your P&Ls, your profit versus loss. And mm. so they need. So what I do is when I work with a small business owner or entrepreneur for that matter, I help with digital marketing, but I also help with that whole, that holistic approach as well to say, well, look, if I'm going to help you, the more I know, the better. So think of mm -hmm. me as a doctor, as a doctor of marketing. So I do that as well. And that's from all my experience with SCORE. If I didn't break, bring these people down, in terms of tell me everything I want to know, I can't help you. You know, you would never dream of going to a doctor and say to the doctor, this is what hurts. This is why it hurts. And I want you to prescribe this medication in this dosage and then treat me this particular way by this deadline. And this is what it should cost. Mm -hmm. You would never dream of doing that. But people who are business owners, and in particular small business owners and nonprofits, they do this every single day by the millions when they ask people to help them and they tell them this is how much it should cost, this is how you should do it. When they ask for uh, RFPs, request for proposals, it's a horrible, antiquated uh, process where you're basically having a cattle call and you're telling people this is the problem, this is how to solve it. This is how much it should cost. This, these are the tools you should use, on and on and on. But if you knew how to solve the problem, you would do it. Mm. Now, I, I know from, from everything that you just said, it sounds like this is a mathematical problem. <laughs> so, with, well, with that being said, how, how do you, what, what is the equation to figure out that, that uh, customer acquisition cost? Typically, I guess you could say. Sure. Give me a quick minute. I'll go to my uh, site here. Okay. Because I just wrote a blog post on that. Here we go. Knowing your customer acquisition cost. I don't know if you could still see me. I hope so. Yep, I still see okay, you. Okay, good. Okay. Take how much money you spent on marketing and advertising. Okay. Now divide that number by the number of customers attracted or brought in, that number is your customer acquisition cost. Now, when we talk about customer acquisition cost, that is the, that's, that's the definition, that's basically the definition of it. Now, like I said, there's other factors at play that have to do with your overhead, um, which could also go into your customer acquisition costs indirectly, like having too many employees or just standing around loafing and you don't decide, you don't need it. How many times have you and I been in stores before the pandemic where they had more people in the, uh, in the store working there than customers? Mm -hmm. A lot. Right. Or conversely, how many times have I been to a home Depot and there's nobody in the store at all? And it's enormous. Mm -hmm. So they they got wise to their customer acquisition costs and their overhead and their P&Ls by saying, look, we'll have two, maybe three people work in the Home Depot. That's enough. Mm -hmm. If you can't find what you want, walk around. Mm -hmm. Or go find so-and-so in the back of the store. And while they're packing pallets, you can ask them where this thing is. And it's the same with most Walmarts, where you see the majority of the employees at the registers, where they're counting money, not in the store, or if they are in the store, what are they doing? They're stocking. Because mm -hmm. robots can't do that yet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, that, and, that, and that's why they have the humans. As soon as they can get automation to do it for them, they will, and which is a, just another tool that small business owners need, such as automation. Mm-hmm. 
I have t I have templated responses when people ask her, what is automation? I have templated responses for certain types of clients. So if a client emails me asking how much, how much, I'll send them a template auto response that answers the question because I'm not going to spend my time repeating the same question over and over again. Or I'll just tell right. them, go to my website and look it up. Right, right. And, and that's the purpose of the company website. Again, what is customer acquisition? Go to dms.blue, type it in the search box. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I can, I can send you the link. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and every day I blog about something uh, different and I try to address different questions that a small business owner or the enterprise business owner might have. But they almost always have to do with quantifying or qualifying the outcome they want how do i how do i get what i want how do i know it if i've gotten what i want mm -hmm. now i'm 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 ready to ask you a question that i was not able to find on your website sure all right so that question is what is the one thing you wish you knew before starting your business don't do it that's so you know <laughs> fools rush in where wise men fear to tread that's what I wish I I knew. And I'd heard it, but I didn't believe it because I thought I was the exception. Yeah. And I wasn't. I wasn't. Um, but, you know, luckily, knock on wood, I didn't lose my shirt like so many business owners have and are doing right now. So, um, you know, I, I, had, I, I did have a fellow mediator actually tell me that a mediation nonprofit would never work where where we were living and working at that time. Mm -hmm. He he told me, he said, this isn't going to work. And I said, come on, man, I know more about marketing. And I didn't say this to him because he was a nice guy. But in my mind, I'm thinking, look, I know all about marketing. I've got ways I could promote this and get this on the first page of Google locally in a heartbeat. And I did. But it didn't do any good because no one in that area was familiar with uh, mediation and the courts in the particular city where I lived would not refer cases, even though I was mm -hmm. even though I was qualified. I had the references, the testimonials, everything in place. I was ready to go, had the experience. They were not interested. So you would you couldn't get there from here. Mm -hmm. um, so what do I wish I knew back then? was not to do it. And it also nonprofits are vicious. Um, if you start a nonprofit and you don't know what you're doing, you are going, I can't say you're going to be, but you could very well be audited a lot. And I was, mm -hmm. I was audited every year by those wonderful folks at the IRS. And it was very stressful, you know, uh, cause they wanted to see numbers that I didn't have. They wanted to see records I didn't know to keep. And I explained to them, you know, hey, look, I'm not trying to hide anything. I just don't know what you're talking about. You know, mm -hmm. so I learned an awful, awful lot. I learned a tremendous amount from that experience. So I would tell people interested in starting a business really to read everything you could get your hands on before you think of starting a business. Um, you know, one of the ways that I did it was, I read every book that was written by the people on Dragon's Den. Dragon's Den is the basis of the show in America called Shark Tank. So Shark mm -hmm. Tank took it from Dragon's Den in the UK, the United mm -hmm. Kingdom, which has been on for like 15 years there. It's very different from the US version. It's much more laid back. They're, they're very slow. They talk more slowly. They have conversations and things like that. The, there's no banging gongs and explosions. It's just people in a warehouse just talking. So I like it a lot better. They get more to the meat and potatoes of business. And I wanted to read every book that the people on that show had written. Mm -hmm. So I read every book that they've written. So I would tell people, read everything you can about the business you want to start until you feel that every potential question that you've written out has already been answered thoroughly and you have no doubt about it. So if I were to ask you a question about that business, you already know it. Right. It's just like getting in the ring with Mike Tyson. If you, if I were to get in the ring with Mike Tyson now, I would be a fool. 
he, he would cripple me and put me in a wheelchair, even at his age now. He would knock every tooth out and, you know, just crush every bone, even where he is now. He's, right. a, he's still a scary guy. Yeah. But people would jump into starting a business without knowing the first thing. And you can lose yeah. a lot of money, a lot of money that way. So you want to be able to answer every question that you could possibly come up with and do your due diligence, do your research. Just as if you get in the ring with Mike Tyson, you would never dream of fighting him unless you were really in super physical condition, uh, very, very well trained. You knew that you had the best trainer, the best reflexes, and it studied his tapes, you know, for hundreds of hours, knew what to expect, knew how to prepare yourself. That's the way you need to do it. That is wisdom coming from years and years of experience, Claire. <laughs> it's like they say in football, wear a cup. Yeah, yeah. That's you ain't never lied about that. <laughs> <laughs> why why would what, what what does that mean? Why would I do that? Oh, you'll find out. You'll find out. Soon enough. Soon mm -hmm. enough. <laughs> Well, I, I want to ask you the last question um, of, of this lesson. And that question is, what is the number one takeaway that you want the class to walk away from this lesson having? My number one le uh, lesson would be, you can have your cake and eat it too. Um, there's a quote that I love very much by an author named Henry David Thoreau. And he wrote a, a great uh, biographical book called Walden. And he said, build your castles in the air for that is where they, that is where they belong. Now lay your foundation beneath them. And so what he meant by that was that you can have your dreams. You can achieve those dreams, but you have to have realistic, solid foundations beneath them or more realistically, flexible foundation beneath them so that you can weather any storm. Um, so do your due diligence, do your um, research before just jumping in. And like I said, I'm very active on Twitter and Facebook, and I have my website. I'm very, very easy to find. It's very easy to remember, uh, dms.blue. And if somebody emails me or, or tweets me a simple question, I'll write them back. I don't have an issue with that um, because I want to help people. I'm not going to go into a, a long hour long discussion without getting paid for my time. But if it's a simple question, sure, I'll shoot you a short question or a short response. So help is there, but you got to be willing and able to divest yourself of your your pride and ego and hubris and listen to that and do the hard work that is required to make it from point a to point b mm -hmm. i i think that is a great way first of all that was a great quote second of all i think it is a great way for us to end the lesson today with that so with that being said i want you to tell the class where can they find you at? What you got going on? What you got coming up? I know you also have a uh, book called The Road to Digital Marketing Profit. I ain't, we didn't get a chance to, to speak on that. But yeah. please, I want you to go ahead, give yourself a shout out and, and let the people know where they can find you. Sure. All you have to do is go to Google and type in dms.blue. You can go to that white address bar that you see in every browser and just type in dms.blue and it'll take you to my site as well. And you can schedule a free uh, consultation. Please do not schedule a free consultation with me to ask me why I like blue or to, to, to some, some spam comment, because if you don't answer the questions, I'm just going to cancel it and say, God bless you. I wish you well, but I don't have time for foolishness. Uh, yeah. But if you have a sincere business uh, issue, then you can go and schedule a free uh, 15 half hour minute, uh, 50 minute 
15 to 30 minute consultation with me. If you have a question, you could go to Twitter and you can tweet me that question. You can find me on Facebook. You can get in touch with me that way as well. And my book is The Road to Digital Marketing Profits which is available on Amazon. I do not sell it on Kindle because I want people to have the tactile physical book in their hands so they could take out a pen and write in the answers for real. And I tell people, if you do this, I'll give you a free consultation. I'll help you with it. We can go over it because if you do it, then you're probably committed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, Professor uh, David Summerflex. I want to say again, thank you, thank you, thank you for coming out to the class, to the School of Hard Knocks, and teaching this lesson on digital marketing. Uh, like I said previously, you know your your experience far precedes you. Your 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 knowledge on on the situation and everything is is mind blowing. I literally got a a bunch of notes that I literally have to go over. <laughs> As soon as class ends, I'm definitely going to have to go over these notes. Well, I offer you the the the, the, the same uh, courtesy as well. Let's keep in touch. And for definitely, those definitely. watching and listening, you can keep in touch as well. Definitely. I, I want to say, again, I appreciate you, sir. Uh, and for you, class, you've pretty much learned everything. Well, I wouldn't say everything, but you learned a great deal of information from our guest professor today. And everything that he just put out was just gold, the experience, the, the the lessons learned. You know, I've learned just a lot just by talking to him before I hit the record button. So I know you guys learned a lot just by me hitting the record button. <laughs> so with that being said, class, uh, I, you know what I like to say around these times? In everything, with everything, chase everything with violent, violent action. Class has concluded, and I will see you guys in the next one.